Hi, I'm Paula Stableford with Duke Interactive Media, here with Gary Santucci to talk about his life, his career, and uh, music. So welcome. Oh, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to this uh, interview because we have a very special concert this weekend. Oh, really? And, and it's in this lovely uh, pearl factory that we're in that right. you're the owner of? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we ha it's, it's a concert that uh, features uh, my group called Span Jazz, mm -hmm. and uh, we perform original music of my devising uh, compositions. And uh, it's based on world beat rhythms that came about uh, through my teaching. I would uh, teach students chord changes, how to play different chords, different rhythms. And these were, I drew the rhythms from like Afro-Cuban or Latin or funky rhythms. And then I would put the chord progressions in there and students would learn the chords plus the rhythms. Then we evolved into improvisation. Then, oh, let's learn how to improvise and create music with those rhythms. And so that was another step. Then I started hearing, well, this sounds pretty good. Maybe I should just write some songs that go with it, like a, make a jazz standard uh, uh, through, with a world beat flair. flair. So we're just going to start with, uh, you, have, you said you have a special concert coming yeah. up. And, and what is that concert? Well, the... Uh, it's, uh, it's a memorial concert for uh, Steve Wilson. Okay. Steve Wilson is a longtime drummer on the jazz scene as well as a, as a, as a rock and roll drummer in the 60s. And he, uh, he was part of the Jazz Connection big band and um, they made this their home. So it was a 17 piece band. We, we had jazz nights regularly. and. Uh, he helped with the programming, and uh, we also kind of hit it off as in with regards to my group too. And he helped develop uh, this, our sound and bringing in players, and it was a tremendous collaboration. He unfortunately passed away uh, recently, so we're going to dedicate this concert to him, and uh, members of his family will also be here for the show. Oh, well, that's amazing! Sorry yeah. to hear about his passing. And what date is that on? Saturday, April thirtieth. That's Which coming is up. coming up, yes, yeah, coming up. And that will be your band? Span Jazz. Span Jazz. Yeah. And so Span Jazz is an interesting name, so how did... Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a name that has a bit of history because it, it was inspired by uh, a great uh, guitarist, jazz guitarist, Canadian jazz guitarist by the name of Lenny Bro, who was a tragic figure but was a real genius and innovator in jazz guitar. And uh, Lenny Bro had problems, substance abuse, pro addiction, and uh, he, uh, that ultimately took his life. Uh, but we knew a lot of friends of mine who, who, were, who took, took lessons with him, and uh, he was, uh, lived in Toronto. He was originally from Winnipeg. And the thing about Lenny was you really couldn't he loaned him your guitar or your car because it, it would disappear. But uh, he was this little short guy, about five foot six, and had had tremendous issues, but overcame them in his music, which was beautiful. So getting back to why span jazz, I, as a kid, I had le listened to a CBC interview with Lenny Bro, and he was talking about his music, and. Um, he was playing a, a flamenco guitar, and I, I was starting to get interested in it. And uh, the interviewer said, well, uh, Lenny, um, you play uh, Spanish-influenced guitar, and you play jazz guitar. So how, what would you call your music? So he, he was smoking and whatever he was doing, and he leaned back and he goes, Span jazz. <laughs> That's a, that's a great story. So that stuck with me mm -hmm. for all, the, all these years. And I said, I think that when I have a group that the right, it's the right group, uh, I'm going to call it Span Jazz. So, so that's how it came about. So that's also a homage to Lenny Bro as well. Yeah. That's amazing. And, yeah. and so you play Spanish and jazz music. Is it a, a melt of the two? Well, in, a, in some ways it is, but it's more... It's, it's Spanish guitar technique that I play in the group, rhythmically and, and uh, finger style. 
uh, uh, based on my techniques that I've learned in flamenco music. But, but the music, the chord changes are more in line with jazz, jazz harmonies. And then there's a, a horn arrangements. So, the, so there's three horns, bass, guitar, keyboard, and drums. So it's a seven-piece seven piece band. Right here on the stage. Right here, yeah. So it must be, it must be loud in here and well, exciting. When it's that's high happening. energy. You know, mm -hmm. And people have been known to dance. Too. Great. You, yeah, so, you leave room for dancing. Yeah, leave room for dancing as well. So, yeah, we're, so that... And then within the context of that framework, there's a lots, there's room for improvisation. So all like like in jazz, so all the players then take uh, turns improvising uh, when it comes to their uh, turn. So that kind of idea. And is there a singer? Do you sing? No, no. There's no there's no vocalist, but there may be soon. I'm working on on that. Some of the tunes that, that I well, one in particular that I wrote is. Uh, originally started out as a, a vocal piece, so it's mm -hmm. called Silent Treatment. And it's kind of, it was about a love story, I guess. Silent Treatment, your eyes tell me the story. Silent Treatment, don't turn your back on me. That's kind of... I think we've know, all been there. Been there, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> so the silent treatment's killing me. Okay, so that, that's the theme of that song. So I thought maybe that's about time to bring those lyrics out and, and try a vocalist in, that, in the Latin jazz world beat uh, style. Interesting. Yeah. And you have actually, yourself, you have three CDs here. Three CDs there, yeah. So now, we have yeah. them here. We yeah, have sure. The River Flows. Yeah. And Zara Banda. Zara Banda. And Santucci and Solo. So which one of these was more of a healing journey for you? Healing journey. I think I, I call, I, so the solo album was the first one. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, I guess, it, it culminated in paying homage to my teacher in Spain, uh, Patricio Galindo. Mm -hmm. And I did it live off the floor with the best takes. There was no editing. And, and it was, uh, it, I, I felt it's, it's, I've sold out one pressing and there's another, I'm in the second one. So it's been, people seem to like it. And it's a classical guitar with some modern elements to it, right? It's all original music. So you went to school in Spain. I yeah, I, I lived in Valencia, nineteen seventy-one to seventy-four. What was the, what ex what was the best part of that experience for you, other than the music, of course? Oh man, it was a time when Spain was just undergoing a transformation, a, f a blossoming as the Franco dictatorship was coming to an end. Mm -hmm. So there was this powerful undercurrents that had been stifled for forty years this whole flowering of this new exciting life that was going to happen, and in fact it did. So I got a chance to experience the underground parts of all of that, and uh, so it was a tremendous uh, time, yeah. So I very, think of it very fondly. In fact, I, it inspired me to write a play about the Spanish Civil War, which I have not produced, but it, it, I'm going to do before all is said and done. And, uh, and uh, so that, uh, so I would say that it, it changed me. It gave me a certain viewpoint and an idealism that I brought back with me, and I think I still have it. So I've, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I still have it, but uh, not without the challenges that uh, life can give you. But that, that changed me. It, or maybe, maybe I won't say change. It was kind of a discovery of who I. What I am and who I was to be. You know, so. Did that solidify your love to be a musician? Did it did it help grow your interest even more? And well, well, yeah, I think so. One of the things I, when I was studying here, I was taking lessons at the Royal Hamilton College of Music, and it was following this conservatory program. And I found that it, it, while it was interesting, it wasn't what I wanted. I wanted a more in depth more life of music, something that uh, was deeper, had deeper meaning. And it wasn't just me learning to play some songs, but I needed to go delve deeper into it. So it just so happened that the teachers I had were, there was a, a couple, married couple, they had started teaching here, came, I guess, and, and uh, they've, they were from Valenc Valencia, and they recommended that I should go there. Mm -hmm. So I went. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I didn't know who I was going to study with or how, what was going to happen, but I, I, I left and, uh, 
And as I said, the rest is history, a lot of it. So it was kind of, that's how it happened. And it seems music is your life, like music and, and being creative. And I know you're a director as well. You've written plays, yeah. written music. Yeah. Is, there, is there a day where you don't wake up and want to create something? Is, it, is this something that you feel it? Is your soul pushing you forward with this? Yeah, I don't think there's, uh, there's, a, there's there is no doubt about that. I mean, it's, it, I'm constantly uh, motivated to do something new and interesting and consolidate the past as well. And uh, there's a lot of work, there's a lot of, a lot of compositions, there's a lot of creative output that uh, that has not seen the uh, light of day yet. So it's Kind of more, shall what shall I do? I'll do what I have to do. I do it every day and do new things. And uh, because it's a process of constant learning, right? If you take your life that way, that there's uh, there's no other choice. It's the influences, the knowledge you seek becomes you take it upon yourself and and you go forward with it. So I would say, yeah, there's, I don't think there is a day that I don't feel like oh, I should be playing the guitar or I should be writing something. So I still love to go just pick up the instrument. It's not ever something that I don't want to do. It's something I want to do all the time. So it's not that you need to be performing, it's just something that you yeah. do daily as part yeah. of yeah. who you yeah. are. Yeah, practicing, uh, learning new things. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming up that's interesting for me. It's kind of harkening back to some of the classical stuff that I'm performing with Musicata, uh, a choir in Hamilton. They were formerly the John Lang Singers. So I'm performing two pieces there, one accompanying the choir, which is uh, and, and, uh, and a solo by Hector Villalobos, the Brazilian guitarist and composer. And, uh, so I've been kind of a specialist uh, of his music. Is that in 1981 I played that Hector Villalobos guitar concerto with the McMaster Symphony, and that was I think you're referencing that award maybe the yes, 1980. Yes, 19. Yeah, that one there. What so, date are you performing this? Uh, May fifth, May Sunday, May 15th. So one is it's called the one piece is Bacchianas Brasileiras, and then the other is Choros Típico. So it, it, that's just my part. There's a lot of. Uh, more pieces, of course, but that's on the Sunday, uh, May 15th. Yeah. And so, then on mm -hmm. the, the Friday before that, I get a chance to do a flamenco gig, which is not too often. So okay. I'm going to Port Credit Yacht Club to do a Spanish night there. So Fun. Yeah. They'll so, be dancing there. That's right. So we'll be doing that. So, so I, 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 performing is still a huge part of what I want to do, and, and I'm enjoying it. I feel I still have the skill. It's not like I mean, my skill is getting better. So even you practice, you practice, practice for always practicing, and you know it's uh, even at a little bit of advanced age, it's still great, mm -hmm. still so good. So the Canadian music scene, and and from you started, I guess, in the '80s, or how do you feel, or even before? I don't know. Um, yeah, before, but yeah. But the Canadian music scene, expressing yourself as a musician and, and making a living out of that, how yeah. could you speak to that? Well, that's a, that's a challenge, no matter which way you look at it, because in music, I mean, it's like you have to cobble together a life. As what a do good, you mean like by a, cobble like together? Like a good shoemaker, you got to mm -hmm. cobbler, right? Shoemaker, you got to cobble, you got to put the sole on, you got to put the laces, you got to put the heel, whatever, all that to make a good shoe. Same thing with a uh, life as a musician. You have to teach, you have to play uh, weddings, or you have to play, you know, do your concerts. When the, ch the time comes, you have to be creating, you have to be inviting people into your world to, to create opportunities. So I think that, uh, so how hard is it? It's, it's hard. You have to have, you know, dedication, and you have to find the economics that work so that you can uh, take care of your family. Right. And would you do it any other way? Uh, no, I don't think I would. I mean, I would like it to be easier, but... <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't be learning, I guess. As yeah, well. I think, you know, adversity has been the great teacher, right? So, um, you know, I, it's, there's no regrets about it. It's just, it's just the way it went. And, mm -hmm. 
And uh, sure, things could have been different. Maybe if I didn't come back to Canada and I had a career in Europe or something, it'd be different. But I, this was my home. I came back here with some idealism to do things. So I started teaching and take the things that I learned. I brought that back with me. And, and many of my students have gone on to be professionals and to be, be teachers as well, music teachers. So That's a good legacy. Th that's, that's tremendous. And in fact... Uh, Here's a, one of my first students that when I was at Mohawk College teaching, he went on to um, graduate and go on to university and became a teacher. And he's a jazz performer in classical. And he's just retired. Can you imagine that? Like I'm, I'm, <laughs> You're still going. Well, I'm still, he's retired. And I'm going, that's pretty nice having a student that went through a, a life and raised his family. He's retired from that and focusing back on music entirely. Mm -hmm. And he was my student, and here I am. And I'm hoping that he'll be sitting in on a couple of tunes uh, this Saturday. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's right here in the Pro Company. Right here, and tickets yeah. you can get. Just call me up, go on Facebook, whatever. It's, it's easy to get tickets. Just uh, show up at the door. You'll be welcomed. You know, so cash is good. <laughs> <laughs> you'll take cash. Yeah. And so what else is the Pearl Factory up to? Well, uh, we're in transition right now. So we're, we, after uh, all these years, we have to, we sold the building due to family circumstances, the changes, life changes. And uh, so I'm actively looking at finding another location. Mm -hmm. It will not be the beautiful building that the Pearl Company is, but uh, I guess I'm kind of in a state of uh, present and future grief about it all, right. but uh, certainly there'll be some uh, way to move forward, and I, that's what I, I believe. So we're going to be moving forward with it and, and mm -hmm. taking the legacy that we have here and renewing it and, and adding to it in some similar way, but maybe not quite the same. Right. I guess it's hard to let go of something you've created, um, but yeah. you're taking the memory and the learning. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard. Is there anything unique here physically that you're going to take with you? Um, well, I'm going to take all my chairs, theater seats, oh, my good. lights, and <laughs> sound system, uh, some of my neat furniture I've collected over the years, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of the infrastructure that you know I think I've got I can just find if I find the right place I'll just drop in so it's actually gonna come with you some of the energy right. is gonna come with you that's right for sure yeah mm -hmm. yeah definitely definitely yeah, yeah so are you open to hearing from writers and different people how can they approach you and, and well, I've always been that way so I think it's it, it as I said I've said many times I'm more of my philosophy is can do not can't and uh, mm -hmm. And that's what I do. So uh, ideas that are brought forward, uh, you know, um, in the other I interview that we did with Charlie, that spoke to that idea of if an idea is good, I'm willing to go for it. And uh, so uh, the, uh, as long as we're doing it with integrity and the best possible uh, uh, way of putting it forward within the means we have, right? So, yeah. Sounds amazing. Yeah. So April 30th. Yeah. And you're going to be with your band here. Right, yeah. Right and downstairs you're here. Welcoming people. Yeah, and we're going to have a little reception afterwards too and uh, get to meet everybody. Uh, it's been a hard thing over the last few years of not having face to face contact with uh, people. So it's nothing like a live audience to reacting to your music, you know, and uh, whether it's a play or not. So it's, it's all we, it's just, and that's part of. The connecting that we do with with the music, right? So, uh, while some people may have a bit of an idea, stereotypical view of what jazz is, uh, and some people may think that it's, it has some um, boring elements to it, you know. Uh, but it's it's it, this I've tried to make it accessible what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, that like you're not doing the American songbook, you're doing new stuff, right? Influenced by many factors from the world travels or the sounds. And so a lot of it is new. And uh, especially with the guitar taking a prominent 
role in up front with the rhythms and uh, so on. So I kind of like it's kind of like I mean piano and jazz has always been like the the main thing, but this case that we have piano and a wonderful pianist Jordan Abraham, but the guitar is, has a, a layer that's out there mm -hmm. and it, it's driving. It's mm -hmm. It has the subtleties and all that. So that's that was kind of my goal. Like going through the years, many uh, guitarists try to influence certain things and and bring forward the instrument in different ways. So that I felt that this was one area that um, we could I could bring forward with this classical flamenco technique and amalgam of those two styles into a jazz, a world beat jazz kind of thing. Uh, and so, so is there a special guitar that you... Yeah, actually yeah. there was, there is. Mm -hmm. there, it was, I co-designed it with Paul Saunders, a luthier from uh, Wallenport. Uh, he'll, he'll actually be here too. I, he never misses a show when I'm playing his guitar. So, really? Isn't that nice? Uh, yeah. So, so it's, um, it was based on a 1930s guitar, that the Django Reinhardt. The gypsy jazz guitar player from Belgium, uh, who had the Hot Club of Paris with Stefan Grappelli, the violinist. He, he, uh, he had the, it was a Selmer Macafieri. That was the name of the, the instrument. So we kind of used that as a inspiration for this this guitar. So it's a nylon string guitar made of maple and spruce, and it has a built-in pickup. So I don't need to mic it. Yet it still has that nice warm nylon string sound. So, That's and and it uh, it just the perf it was it turned out to be the perfect guitar for this ensemble with playing with horns and larger sound and laying down the harmonies with it. So yeah, that was uh, that, so there is a special guitar. Sounds lovely. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. It's been great talking to you. Pleasure. And uh, look forward to, I'm going to be here too, hopefully, uh, uh, yes. on April 30th. Hopefully there's room for dancing. There will yeah. be, there will be, because the band will be back there, and this area will be wide open here. So I, I'm, I'm going to take up all this all room. All right, yeah, sure. Very so good. I'm, thank you. It's Paula Stableford again with Duke Interactive Media with Gary Santucci. And hope to see you at his Pearl Factory on April 30th. Thanks.